Good morning viewers, I welcome you in my program Morning with Jesus. Once again with a new topic we are going to be together. Um, and I hope everybody is having a good time with the family, enjoying yourselves and watching our programs on BTL. Um, uh, viewers, today I thought uh, about uh, the, la the family life. And when I thought about the family life, I just uh, got the main characters of the family life that are husband and wife. It starts all over from there only. And then I was just reading in the Bible that God created uh, 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 human beings as a pair, man and a woman later as well. And it really gave me a motivation to why not talk about the marriage, Christian marriage. The value of uh, uh, husband and wife in the life of a Christian. And so that's what we are going to do today because this is uh, the requirement of the state. And uh, when it's blessed by God in the church, then it becomes, uh, uh, I guess it becomes more stronger then. Um, but uh, I think it would be better if we reflect upon this uh, in, in the in, in light of the word of the Lord. And that we are going to do in a moment with Brother Robert. But till then, take a short break. Welcome back viewers and here on screen you can see brother sitting with us. Welcome in the program brother. Thank you Hina. And uh, today before we start talking about our chosen topic of marriage in uh, the Christian life, um, let's do a short prayer. A short prayer. Yeah. Let's just pray together. Father I thank you for your word and I thank you that your word gives us some teaching and clarity about marriage and also about the question of divorce. So I thank you that you would enlighten our minds today as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So brother, um, I just thought about the human life, human family. And then the idea came in my mind that uh, what is the importance of uh, Christian marriage in yeah. the life of a Christian? Yeah. Because, you know, even independently, if I look around in um, uh, in my society, I can see that girls are living a very good and very prosperous life by um, by themselves. They are independent, they are earning, they are enjoying life and so is for the boys. Then still uh, it, it, it is insisted in the word of God also that it's good for man and woman to um, live together in a sacred bonding. So why is it so important? before God and why is it so important yeah. in the life of a man? Yeah, good questions. Well, let's just have a look at what the Bible has to say about marriage. And we'll start with Genesis chapter 2 and uh, I'll read there from verse uh, 22. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this cause a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. You know, uh, just going back in this chapter, we see that uh, God brought all of the animals to Adam so that he could name them, you know, and Adam looked at all of the animals, but there was no animal that that fitted him, you know. So God uh, caused a sleep to come over me, he took one of his ribs and from that he made the woman. And uh, that's why Adam says, you're now a bone of my bones, because she was made of Take one of his bones. Him, yes. yeah. That's why men have one less rib now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, he says, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So in God's eyes, marriage is when two 
people become one. And what a lot of people fail to realize about marriage is that marriage is a covenant. It's not only a covenant that you make with the woman or the man that you marry, but it's a covenant that you also make with God. You know, and uh, I'd just like to uh, share uh, a few thoughts about that. When you read in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4, and this was actually uh, uh, our wedding text, because here it says in chapter 4, if I read from verse 8, he says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart now you know he, yeah, but he, now there is another question in the verses that you read that initially you talk about two yeah. and in the end you say they're the cord of three strands yes so he firstly like he, he's listing or listing all the advantages of two over one you know so there is a it is meant to be an advantage when you are married because you have a helper that's what uh, Eve was called, Adam, his helper. So you have someone who fits you and uh, you form a unit that's called a marriage. You, be, you start a family then. That's why you leave your father and your mother and you, you form a new family. And the thing is that it is a, uh, a covenant that you make with each other. And that's why he says here, he talks about a cord with three strands. Now, out research, it has um, been proven that uh, a rope with three strands is the strongest rope that you can have. You know, you can have one with two or with four or five strands, but it will never be stronger than one with three strands. So when we are together in a covenant with each other and God is involved in that covenant, that is the, the strongest union that you can have. And this is what God meant for the marriage situation. Now, I just want to elaborate a little bit further, and we'll go to Ephesians chapter 5. And uh, there we see here, uh, in verse 20, from reading from verse 22, uh, Paul says here, he says, Wives, be subject to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the saviour of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be subject to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. So he's, he's using the marriage situation here as an illustration of the relationship between Christ and the church. And Jesus himself yeah. also states that the importance of marriage, when he answers the people, when he yes. questions him, that what do you say when Moses says that divorce is fine? Yeah. What do you say? We'll get to that in a minute. I'll just explain this a little bit further. Okay. See, here he is talking about, the. Uh, he's using this illustration because Jesus loved the church. He gave his life for the church. So he's saying like a marriage is just like to be a reflection of that, where the husband loves his wife. You know, mostly the, uh, uh, there's only one place in the scripture where it says wives love your husbands. You know, in all the other places where it's talking about marriage, it says, husbands, love your wives. You know, and, the other, and then it says, wives, your response is to subject yourself to your husband. So what is it that, <laughs> that makes a marriage a good marriage? Uh, brother, we will continue with the discussion. Uh, but viewers, we are going to take a short break and then we see you back.
welcome back viewers uh, yes brother we were talking about the bonding between husband and wife yeah. we're talking about what makes the basis of a good marriage and these verses here in ephesians i believe they show us what is the basis of a good marriage see every woman wants to feel that she is loved by her husband yeah you know that's that's why girls marry men because they love them because they feel they are loved by the person so they give themselves to their husband you know i um i heard a joke recently i'll share that you know i said um, why did god make women beautiful but dumb <laughs> And the answer is he made them beautiful so that men would love them and he made them dumb so that they would love men. <laughs> just funny, That's a good chemistry. <laughs> yeah, it's just a funny, it's, it's not true. So don't, don't believe it, it's just a joke. But here he was saying like, uh, this is the, because Christ, he loved himself and he gave himself for the church. Now that's the self-sacrificing attitude that a husband needs to have in giving himself to his wife, in loving his wife, you know, and that doesn't mean that you just love her when she's being nice, you know, and when everything's going well. It also means that you have to love her, even though you might be having some differences of opinion, you know, there may be some strife, you know, because of this, you know, you, you know, sometimes in a, in a marriage that, you know, things can, you know, there are so many escalate, downs, you know, yes. uh, because of a difference of opinion mm. about something. But you have to learn to love and accept each other. And uh, this is important for the husband to keep loving his wife, that she knows that he loves her. On the other side, it's important for the husband in the family to know that his wife respects him. You know, this has been... Uh, uh, these two things, um, they determine how successful a marriage will be. When a woman feels that her husband loves her, she feels safe. You know, she feels it's a, a safe environment for her and uh, she can easily give herself. And a husband, on the other hand, he wants respect from his wife. He wants his wife to respect her. You know, he, he talks here about the wife being uh, obedient to her husband. Now, it doesn't mean that his wife is to be a slave. You know, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about uh, showing respect to her husband, respecting him for who he is, that he feels respected, even if no one else would respect him. So the dig that his dignity, wife dignity would must be respect him. So that, yes, and this has to do with his dignity. And uh, you find very often in marriages where there are problems, that this is the root of the problem. You know, and... Uh, because the husband will say, no, I, I can't love her the way she's treating me, you know, and the wife responds exactly the same way, you know. He's, <laughs> but what he's, can not, you suggest? You know, he's not treating me well, he's not loving me, so how can I respect yeah. him? Yeah, you know? because nowadays it's a problem. People are very egoistic, girls, boys together, and they, they don't prefer to stay together, but rather they choose to stay separate. How would you suggest them something to keep yeah. uh, the things together? I would say don't copy the world. You know, in the world today, you have a lot of people, and it's very prevalent here in Holland, that people just live together. They don't get married, you know, they just go and live together this way. And, uh, you know, that's not acceptable in God's eyes. I mean, God doesn't really approve of that at all. You know, the Bible does not approve of that. In the Bible, that's called fornication. You know, any sexual relationship outside of the marriage is not right in God's eyes. You know, so it cannot receive God's blessing. But people are being influenced by the world. Christians, many Christians are being influenced by the world and they're starting to act like the world. Now, if you start to act like the world, you will have the same problems that the world has. You know, it will not help because the world cannot help you. Help comes from God, not from the world. So it's important to follow the biblical principles. You know, people who just live together are very egoistic. You know, they're only really thinking of themselves. Why don't they get married? Because marriage is a commitment and they do not want to commit themselves. You know, they want to, 
have all of the pleasures, but not the responsibility. See, they want to leave the back door open a little bit so they can always leave. Because they no, we're not married, you know, so I can always leave. Yeah, that's what... You know, and that's the way, that's their thinking. You know, so don't think and act like the world. You know, think and act according to the Bible. And when you do that, you know, marriage is a commitment. You know, I'm not saying marriage will always be easy. It's not. You know, we, no, are, we have been through a lot of difficulties in our marriage as well. But I'm still married. We are still married after almost 33 years. You know, but it takes a commitment. You know, and if it, I'm sure if it was not for God in my life, we, we may have got divorced years ago. But when you have God in your life, that makes all the difference because you are not alone. Yeah. You see, God can give you the strength to carry on when you even think, oh, it's impossible. You know, when you get so exasperated, you think, oh, I just want to give up. The things I get, I think gets worse when the, uh, the husband and wife don't understand that they are from two different uh, families. They are from two different uh, uh, social setups. And there definitely are going to be differences. And they don't keep this uh, fact in uh, place in their mind. Then the things I think gets worse. Yeah. So uh, this is what I thought. That we need to have a big heart to accept each other, uh, each other with yeah. the differences. Yeah. You know, um, generally we, we tend to think of ourselves as being a good person. You know, and we're, you know, uh, when you get married... It's when you find out who you really are. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, what happens before people get married, you know, before they get married, they, you know, they see the other person, they're always putting on their best efforts, you know, trying to look nice, you know, look very attractive, to please the other person, you know, and because you're only seeing each other like infrequently. But when you get married, you're living in the same house, you're seeing each other for hours every day. So, you're not pretending anymore. You know, you see also the bad points of the other person. You know, you see it when they get angry or they do little things that irritate you. And this is where marriage is a place where you learn to crucify your flesh. You know, where you learn to die to yourself. Because you can see all of the faults in the other person, but they also see all of your faults, you know. So that is where you have to be, have a humble heart and to learn that you have to accept them. Now, one thing that we do wrong is we try and change the other person. Yeah, maybe that's why Jesus also ins insisted on the importance of uh, staying together in marriage forever. Although people uh, came to him uh, and asked him that uh, Moses gave the permission and what do you say? Yes, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, hmm. yeah, and it's also time for the break. Okay. So, we, viewers, we will continue with this discussion after the short break. Viewers, we are back, and uh, let's continue with the uh, with the discussion where we left it. Mm. Uh, so we just were about to talk about Jesus talking yeah. about the importance of marriage. Yeah. Now, in the, uh, let's just read a couple of those verses in Matthew chapter nineteen, where Jesus said to them, uh, "You know, he said uh, in verse six, he said, uh, consequently, there are no more two but one flesh.' We just read that in Genesis." He says, what therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. And they said to him then, well, why did Moses command you to give her a certificate of divorce and divorce her? He said to them, because of the hardness of your heart, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it's not been this way. And I say to you that whoever divorces his wife, except for immorality, that is adultery, and marries another, commits adultery you know jesus said you know moses let you because your hearts were hard you know <laughs> they the people 
were not willing to work on their marriage. They think, oh, it's getting a little bit difficult. Oh, get rid of that woman. Oh. You know, that's, that was their thinking. So but Jesus, Jesus said, no, 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 it's not like that. Marriage is a commitment. commitment. You know, you don't separate what God has joined together. You know, God has joined you together in marriage. Don't go looking for a way out. You know, divorce is easy. That's for cowards, I'd say. People who don't accept the challenge of a marriage, of a commitment. They don't want you, if you don't want to commit yourself, you'll look for an easy way out, an escape route. But Jesus said here, it's, you know, marriage is actually only accept, or divorce, I mean, is only acceptable in the situation where adultery has taken place. Uh, but, so before we, it's time almost to finish the program. Yeah. I really don't want to stop you. But uh, brother, before we finish, I would, I want you to do a special prayer for people who have been bonded together in this uh, loving relationship. Mm -hmm. And also for those who have been um, away from each other for some reason. Although they understand the fact that it's uh, their relationship, uh, not only between them, but with God as well. Mm -hmm. So before we finish the program, I would like to do yes. a small prayer for yeah. them. Okay, let's pray together. Father, at this moment we just pray for all of those viewers uh, who may be having marriage difficulties at this time, maybe even thinking about divorce. But Father, I just pray for them, Father, that you would help them to realize that marriage is a covenant with you as well. It's a covenant in which you are involved. It's a three-way relationship. It's a commitment. And I pray, Father, that you would give them courage, the courage to accept this challenge, to give themselves, if they are a wife, to respect their husbands, if they are a husband, to love their wives, even as you, Lord Jesus, gave your life for the church. So great was your love. So we pray, Father, that you would strengthen the marriage relationships, strengthen that individual commitment to the marriage. We just pray for these people that your grace would be sufficient for them, even as your word says, Father, because they are not alone. You are with them. We thank you, Father, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, is there something else that you want to say, brother, before we end the program? Because we are just towards the last moment of yeah. the program. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, look, if, even if you, are having, if you are having difficulties in a marriage, don't give up. Seek God. You know, with God's help, you can overcome any difficulty. Just learn to let the love of God flow through you. If you are a husband, just love your wife. It doesn't matter what. You cannot change her, but God can. And if you show her love and commit it to God, he will change her. If you are a wife, respect your husband. Give him respect. Show him respect, even if he's not treating you well the way you would like to be treated. Give him that respect anyway. His response will be more than worth it. God bless you. Thank you very much, brother. And viewers, it was really a very um, fruitful uh, discussion, I would say, especially as far as this very important matter of marriage is concerned. And I really um, appreciate for the verses that we have shared together. And I wish everybody watching this program a very um, happy life uh, and a very uh, loving life together. And uh, I'm looking forward to have your comments uh, um, on BTL because they are very important to us as well. And if you want us to talk about some special topic, you can just let us know about it. So take very good care of yourselves. Until we meet again, bye-bye. Do not forget to like the video, subscribe BTL TV, and press the bell icon to receive notifications.